It wasn't so long ago that when you went to a car dealership, your only options were gasoline-fueled cars. Electric cars were, in short, impractical and unappealing buys. In 2020, however, you're likely to have crossed some form of an electric car. In the span of just 10 years, the automotive market has shifted dramatically. But why now? In this three-part series, we're going to explore the history of the electric car, how it was revived, and where it will take us in the future. Let's dive in. At the start of the 20th century, the automotive market was led by steam-powered cars, which were more popular than either electric or gas autos. Compared to gas and steam, electric vehicles were reliable, easy to operate, and low maintenance. Gas vehicles, on the other hand, were noisy, smelly, and produced uncomfortable vibrations. Steamers were simply too complicated to operate. By 1912, up to 20 companies were in the business of producing electric vehicles, and around 34,000 electric vehicles were registered to Americans. At the same time, access to electricity skyrocketed. The percentage of households with electricity access increased from 3% to 35% between 1910 and 1920. In fact, a New York Times piece from 1911 was enamored with the potential of the electric car, saying, quote, now it is possible for an owner of an electric to install his own charging plant in his stable, and the electricity power companies are anxious to connect their feed wires to these individual charging plants." End quote. All signs were pointing towards an America running on electric vehicles. Luckily for the gasoline car, America's entrepreneurial spirit drove oil settlers to make a major discovery. Vast oil reserves in the Texas oil boom of 1901. Americans were already using oil to power their homes, mainly for lighting and heat. Through the end of the 1800s, however, the price of oil began to rise, and electricity started to seem like a better and better option. This new discovery once again made oil economically feasible for the average American consumer, and the suddenly powerful oil industry knew it had to take advantage of this rare opportunity. Oil could become the single most important resource to the American consumer and the American economy if gasoline-powered cars succeeded. First, Americans needed to change their perspective on gasoline cars. Leveraging the existing sexism that was, and is, pervasive in American culture, the oil industry set out to paint electric cars as feminine, and for women who wanted the illusion of freedom. Gas cars, however, were marketed as complex and harder for women to understand, with levers and pedals and exhausts and clatter and such. With most households' main breadwinners being males, this swayed consumer, i.e. men's, preferences towards the gasoline car. Second, American consumers needed gasoline cars to be accessible. In 1908, Henry Ford introduced the mass-produced Model T, a gas-powered vehicle significantly more affordable than the typical electric vehicle. The Model T cost $600 compared to the $2,000 price tag for an electric vehicle. As we all may have heard in grade school, the assembly line made the Model T extremely cheap to make, reduced production time to just 93 minutes, and increased manufacturing efficiency. This was at a time when electric vehicles were still individually handcrafted. For the first time, efficient, low-cost production brought vehicles to within budget for middle-class Americans. Third the electric car needed to be removed as a viable competitor. By the 1920s, the U.S. had a better system of roads connecting cities, and Americans wanted to get out and explore. With the discovery of Texas crude oil, gas became cheap and readily available for rural Americans, and filling stations began popping up all across the country. In comparison, very few Americans outside of cities had electricity at the time. By 1935, electric vehicles effectively disappeared. Over the next 30 years, electric vehicles entered a dark age with little advancement in their technology. Cheap, abundant gasoline and continued improvement in the internal combustion engine hampered demand for alternative fuel vehicles. The Great Depression in 1929 all but froze access to capital globally, ending any new investments into electric technology. And when World War II arrived, the U.S. government poured its resources into Ford's assembly line to manufacture gasoline-powered cars, tanks, and planes at scale. This decidedly put the gas car in front and cemented the status quo for the next few decades. Fast forward to the late 1960s and early 1970s. 
Soaring oil prices and gasoline shortages, peaking with the 1973 Arab oil embargo, created a growing interest in lowering the U.S.'s dependence on foreign oil and finding homegrown sources of fuel. Congress took note and passed the Electric and Hybrid Vehicle Research, Development, and Demonstration Act of 1976, authorizing the Energy Department to support research and development in electric and hybrid vehicles. Yet the vehicles developed and produced in the 1970s still suffered from drawbacks compared to gasoline cars. Electric vehicles during this time had limited performance. Maximum battery ranges around 40 miles and top speeds of 45 miles per hour. Over the course of the next 20 years, automakers began modifying some of their popular vehicle models into electric vehicles. This meant that electric vehicles now achieve speeds and performance much closer to the gasoline-powered vehicles, but still limited in range of 60 miles. The first major turning point was the introduction of the Toyota Prius. In 2000, the Prius became the world's first mass-produced hybrid electric vehicle and became an instant success with celebrities helping raise the profile of the car. But despite this progress, electric cars were still unable to match the practicality of the gasoline car. It would require a momentous change in consumer sentiment and accessibility, as well as an infusion of capital to build out the infrastructure needed to make these cars feasible. That is, until a small Silicon Valley startup, Tesla Motors, announced it would start producing luxury electric sports cars with 200 plus miles on a single charge. While many of us might believe that electric cars only recently came into existence, the truth is that electric cars have been around even longer than the gas car. Originally more popular than the gas car as well, electric cars were banished in the industry by the deliberate actions of the oil industry. Taking advantage of watershed events such as the Texas oil boom and the invention of the assembly line, as well as by deliberately manufacturing consumer sentiment through gendered marketing, the oil industry played a direct role in the success of the gas car at the expense of the electric. It wasn't inevitable that the America that we know today would become a country of gas guzzlers. And it's no coincidence that the negative stereotypes manufactured back in the day about electric cars still exist today. In part two, we explore how Tesla overcame the hurdles that the electric car couldn't for 110 years.